Welcome everyone and thank you for attending this afternoon. Uh, it is certainly my pleasure and honor to introduce uh, John Henry, uh, who will be um, speaking with us today about the, the pleasures and or pitfalls of uh, building a new house uh, from scratch and the, the, the good uh, points and bad points that go along with that. Without any further ado, John. Thank you, Randy. Uh, a couple of years ago, I came up with a brainstorm idea of we should build a new house. Uh, I came home one day and I said to my wife, I said, the markets are up, houses will never be this much money in our town ever again. I'm, sell I'm selling the house. And she said to me, she looks at me and says, you got to be crazy. We just spent the last 14 years remodeling, have finished the whole place exactly how we want it. I said, oh yeah. Well, my secretary at work, she got a new place. Everything went well with her. She bought an RTM. We're great. Let's go have a look. Well, reluctantly, she said, yeah, okay, we'll go have a look. We, all, we looked around the homes, walked into one, and we both kind of stood there and looked and just went, wow, is that amazing. Checked out the price. Hey, right on. Yep, we'll do it. So finally we decided it was, I had to the deposit check in my pocket. It was the 8th of July, and... We're talking to the lady who was selling the house to us, and I said, the only problem I got is that we're pretty late in the season. How long before we get our house? She said, 10, 12 weeks, you'll be have it. Okay, good. So we signed the papers, started, got back home, decided we'd do the basement. We're going to build a wood basement, wood floor. We can do this ourselves. So we got this all ready, got it rolling, got the basement ready. Where's our house? Oh, well, there's been a delay. Oh, great. Middle of October when? Oh, you know, and no, May, maybe November. Oh, geez, this, is, this isn't looking so great now. So the weather starts to turn a little bad. I thought, well, I'll run to town. I'll get some tarps. I'll tarp it. It'll be fine. Well, two feet of snow later, of course, the tarps cave in. The, the wind rips the tarps all to hell. So over winter, our, our basement sits. We have to move out of our old house. We stay in a 600-square-foot cabin all winter, driving ourselves crazy. Um, in the spring, we have vac trucks at work, so we sucked out probably 50 cubes of water out of the basement, which is actually surprising in a hole that big is only about a foot deep. And uh, we get ready, keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting. We're still renting another place in this little cabin. Finally, the end of June, our house finally shows up. So, yeah, 51 weeks to the day just about our house shows up. And then we're not ready to move in. I still got plumbers to get. I got to get it all ready. Got to get everything hooked up, the electrician lined up, everything. So we spent another two months getting it finally ready to move in. And the day we are moving in was... The day before we co I come out to BMC for the first time. So it was probably about 14 or 15 months from the time we ordered it to the time we moved in. So if you think, if you think it's an easier job building a house because somebody's ripping you off, selling their house for too much, it's not necessarily that way because you've got all the work to do besides. You've got the house to buy. You got the landscaping, you got the finishing to do, you got to build a garage or pay for somebody to do it in our area if you pay. It costs you an arm and a leg. So you, if you can do it yourself, you do it yourself. So it's uh I said if I did it again I'd buy somebody's house. I'd pay the money and buy it because then I can you know move in. If I don't like to paint, I'll paint it. That's all. You don't have to worry about deadlines and you know everything rolling past. So in my experience that's what I would suggest is buying somebody else's house unless you really like to like to uh, have all the troubles that we had, but hopefully if you do, do do decide to build a house, that you have a little better luck than we have. Thank you. Next up, we have Leanne, and Leanne's going to talk to us about being a mom. Uh, me, without children, I'm always interested in getting a new perspective on uh, the, the wild world of parenting. And uh, as many of you have children, I'm sure you can relate to what Leanne's and what the, the thinking is. So, without further ado. I don't know where to start. Um... 
I have son. He's going to be 11 next Saturday. It's kind of scary, considering everything that we've had to be through. Being a mom, I guess, is... I don't know, it's pretty amazing. You know, you get to watch from the day that they're born, and you actually get to show them how to do things. You get to teach them how to walk and talk, and you get to play with them and stuff like that. My son, in particular had a rough start. He was very small when he was born. He was only about four pounds and he was pretty sick. So he had to be in an incubator and have all these tubes and stuff hooked up to him. So that was pretty hard. But finally got him home and thought everything was fine. And then all of a sudden he's crying all the time. Oh my God, right? Pull out your hair, gonna hurt yourself. Can't sleep, anything. Well, we found out that he wasn't colicky, but he had a hernia when he was a month and a half old. So he had to go for his first operation because they couldn't fix it without it. Then, finally, we get home from the hospital. He slept till 4 o'clock the next afternoon. Somebody had to come and wake us up to make sure we were still alive because we had been so out of sleep for so long. And he's growing up and stuff. And I think kids say the darndest things. They're really funny and they're cute. And you actually have to have a good sense of humor, I think, when you have children or you might push yourself over the edge. And uh, being as he was so small and everything when he was young, he's had developmental issues and stuff just by trying to grow up and stuff. And I think it's really tough because a lot of the kids at school want to bully. And he's only in grade five now, but I think when he was younger and we had him in a regular public school, some of the kids were bullies and stuff. So we've had to try and teach him the difference from right and wrong and show him how to, you know, be better than the person that's actually doing it for him and stuff so let's put it now he's big pain funny loves to be beat on and uh thinks he's a funny kind of smart mouthy so but it's fun i don't think i would ever change that for anything thank you leanne um some of the challenges and Rewards that are going to be coming in the near future, that was a great look at it. Thank you.